Hi, I'm going to have a hands-on look at CAN bus protocols and with the help of some hardware, I'm going to highlight how they allow for efficient data handling. Here is the hardware I'm using. I'm using a MCU in the form of the Raspberry Pi Pico Zero and I'm using the MCP2515 CAN bus chip with a SPI interface and that's linked up to the MCU. Here I've got the twisted pair which makes the CAN bus backbone with the termination resistor here set by this jumper and on the other side there is a termination resistor set by this small switch. And this CAN bus to USB interface will be plugged into my computer and I'll be interacting with the CAN bus using socket CAN and CAN tools on Linux. J1939 is one of the main CAN bus protocols that is in use. We're going to have a quick look at the J1939 data dictionary, which defines every single bit in a CAN bus packet of a J1939 compliant CAN bus system. So we have things which are called PGN parameter group names. So parameter groups are merely bunches of values and they are identified on the CAN bus by a number in the header. So every message that is used by J1939 compliant CAN bus systems is defined here. So here we've got the description. You can see cruise control, vehicle speed. Each PGN parameter group is a clustering of values which are referred to as suspected parameter groups, SPNs. So each SPN has a number which is its key in the database. So as we can see here, we've got engine override control, engine request speed control. Better way of looking at the data is in a JSON format. Here we've got the PGNs listed here. So each PGN has a key. So zero, for example, refers to torque speed control. And this parameter group is made up of multiple suspected parameters. So we have SPN695, which is engine override control mode. And we have 696, which is engine request speed control conditions. The data dictionary defines the start bits of each location. The SPN695 starts at bit zero. And if we look at 695, we see it's defined to be two bits in length and so forth. With just this data dictionary, you can make up a J1939 message and you can pass a J1939 message. There's multiple other standards in use. The most common are proprietary versions. So Volkswagen, Mercedes will all have their own messages. And a standard way of defining these messages is in a DBC file format. There are other formats, but this, this is one of the main ones. And it's the exact same concept. So here we have the PGN parameter group number, and here we have the SPNs. And, and this encoding tells you the start bit for each of the SPNs and their range. All the same information that we saw in the JSON format is in this DBC format. You could simply include this whole file in a project and decode a message that is on the CAN bus, or you can use it to create a compliant J1939 message to put onto the CAN bus. However, that's not a very uh, suitable solution as in practice, you're only gonna be interested in a select few of the messages or PGNs that are defined in this data dictionary. Let's just have a look at the structure of a CAN bus message and then we will build up a J1939 compliant message using just the date dictionary. So here we have a frame. So at the application level, we're just gonna be caring about the identifier and the date field. So here we have the extended version of the CAN bus identifier. And as we can see, it's split 
up into sections. We have this end section, which is your device's address. This next section, PS, and this is either going to be the destination or it's going to be part of a defined set PGN value. And then here we have the top byte of the PGN. And then at the top, we have the priority. Really, I've never actually had to worry about the data page, except for the source address, which you have to negotiate. All these bits are defined. So if we go here, you have default priority values for every single message. If the top byte of your PGN is uh, less than 240, then the lower byte of the PGN will be the destination address, the no node on the CAN bus you want to talk to, or it will be uh, the global address of 255. So when you look at the data dictionary, you will see that some of the PGNs have their lower byte set to zero. So now I'm gonna craft a process data message using the definitions in the data dictionary. So one by one, we're gonna look at each of the SPNs. SPN 2421, which is process data modifier. So 2421, and we see that this is three bits in length and it's a value zero to seven. Now you need to pay attention and be careful with the byte ordering because the bytes are in little endian. The lower bytes come first. It seems a bit confusing at first, but when you're doing bitwise operations, it makes life a lot easier. So here I've sketched out the flow for handling a CAN bus message. We're gonna have a CAN bus receive function, and then we're going to look up the parameter group name value in a hash table. That hash table is going to store a function pointer to handle the parameter group name. If the parameter group name is in hex EA00, that refers to a request, i.e. a get. We're going to then look up the parameter group name. Then we're going to look up the valid SPNs for the requested data from a hash table and send a response. Or if it's not a request PGN, then if we have the parameter group name stored in a hash table, we're going to look it up, pull out the number values from the message, and then set them in the hash table for use in our program. So here's my project structure. I've got my main application code. I've got a CAN header, which merely is defining the structure of a CAN message and a couple of functions. C makes list. Then I've got the driver for the MCP2515 CAN bus chip. Then I've got UT hash, which is a library that gives you hash map functionality. Then I've got a consumer class. In my main app, I'm initializing the IO pins. So we've got the SPI and then I've got a interrupt pin. I have a interrupt routine which is merely setting a volatile ball to true. In my main I call the initialization functions one at a time checking the value of the, the interrupt pin flag. Then I read the status of the CAN bus chip and if there's a message to receive I receive that message and then I pass that message over to my consumer function. So then in the consumer function, I have set up handler functions for each of the main parameter groups. Parameter group hex EE00 is to do with names of CAN bus devices. And then I've got a getter. So this is to get the name of the CAN bus node that is running this code. I have a parameter group hash map and I have a suspected parameter number hash table. My initialization function is populating my hash tables. So here I am making a strut, which represents a PGN, 
and this strut has a handler function pointer and uh, possibly a getter function pointer and then I'm adding that to the hash map and then I'm doing that for the other PGNs and then I move on to the SPN values it's not a valid use case but for this example I'm just using all of the SPNs that make up the process data PGN a lot of the SPNs are merely giving information about the value so for example these two PGNs data dictionary column and data dictionary row and now if we look at the consume function all I'm going to do with my consume function is I'm going to get my PGN value from the ID of the CAM message and then I'm going to check if that PGN exists in the PGN hash map. If it exists, I'm then going to call the function pointer for the handler in the PGN strut. So I print F statements littered throughout the code. So I'm going to demonstrate how this data handling message flow works in practice. Here I've got a bunch of messages that I'm going to use. These are process data messages. This is a address claim message. This is a request message. And here we have two proprietary messages. Here I've got a script to bring up the CAN bus. And we set the bit rate, which for J1939 is 250 kilobits. So now I've got a CAN bus port that is up and then using the CAN dump utility in CAN tools and provide the CAN bus interface as the argument, we can dump anything that gets put on the CAN bus. So if I send this message using the CAN send utility, we will get its address in response. So if you read up on all the SPNs that make up the name, you'll learn what each of these bits mean. So this is the unique identifier, this is the manufacturer, and this is the implement type. If the PGN has been found, it is calling the handler function pointer. This is the relevant function pointer that was called. If I issue a proprietary message with a payload of nine, this is going to dump my hash table of SPN values. So here I have all of the SPN keys with their corresponding values. Uh, if I send a process data message, if I take this pa packet here. So here I'm handling the process data message and I'm pulling out the SPN value. So now if I call my proprietary message that dumps the SPN value table, we will see that the SPN value of 2429 has now got the new value. Now in a real life use case, a one dimensional SPN table would probably not be appropriate. What you would more likely have is an SPN table for each device that you're interested in that exists on the CAN bus or even you might have an SPN table for each individual instance on a implement. So in conclusion, the efficient data handling that is seen in CAN bus systems is achieved with a strict schema and lookup tables. 